And without further ado, actually, I'm going to pass over to Daryl, who's going to give us a bit of an overview of the careers and enterprise company. So, Daryl, do you want to kick us off this morning? Thank you very much, Gareth. I will. I'll just share my screen. I've got a couple of slides. Not too many. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to bombard you with them. Uh, so, can you all see that? Yep, can indeed, Daryl. Thank you. Brilliant. That's always the uh, the first test, isn't it? <clears throat> so, as I said, Gareth, thank you for for inviting me along this morning. Uh, I'm going to give a bit of a brief history of, of careers and enterprise company and then talk about how you can get involved as, as employers and look at this more of an employer angle than on a normal education uh, angle. I'll talk a bit about the business benefits as well. So careers and enterprise company. Well, we've been around since about 2015 uh, with a national body for careers and education in England and our mission really is is as simple as helping every young person find their best next step and that's something that, that we've been pushing and working for for a long time. We now work through a, a network of local careers hubs so as well as as much as we're a national body we've got quite a local focus and those careers hubs are, are run and managed in partnership with, with key local partners so in Cambridgeshire we work very closely with the combined authority who are our main contractor, the CNN on the call, and has been involved in delivering aspects of our network for probably longer than I've been around. So we've got a lot of local knowledge and, and expertise on the ground. So across our careers of network today, we have 90% of the secondary schools and colleges in England who are actually linked to a careers of or getting support from a careers of. And we've got somewhere in the region of four and a half thousand business volunteers supporting that network and those careers up. So yeah, quite quite a, a at scale now to what we were when we first started with a real drive for quality. Uh, so we're looking at impact, inclusion, leadership. We bring employees and educators together through our careers hubs, forming those links. And, and the key to that is sustainability, where schools know which businesses to go to and businesses know how to support schools. That's, that's the drive that we're looking for. We use national data in two ways. One, to, to benchmark where, where schools are across the country. But more importantly, to look at where we need to target support. We have quite a, a drive now for disadvantage. And we work again at local level, making sure that we identify where the disadvantaged young people are and we get the right support to them based on the feedback that we get from them as young people uh, through surveys that we do. And, and the last thing we do is, is work very closely with careers leaders within school to make sure they're getting the help and support that they need uh, and they're getting the, the level of training that they need from us. So that's a bit of a whistle stop of, of what we do. I want to talk about a couple of aspects of the way we work with, with employers. There's a few ways that employers can get involved, but the two main things I would say are, are becoming a cornerstone employer or becoming an enterprise advisor. So cornerstone employers are a, a flagship group of around about 300 businesses, and they're made up of different shapes and sizes and, and sectors. And they come together to try and transform the lives of young people in their area. They work in collaboration strategically with, with schools, uh, colleges, other stakeholders through our network of careers. And some of the, the real, I, I think, benefits are is it's that opportunity to inspire students uh, to tell them more about your industry, to showcase the different pathways to get in. Because young people aren't always aware of that. To be able to collaborate with other businesses and, and learn, address skills gaps that industry face and, and look at opportunities for system change. It's really an opportunity to come in and, and promote different businesses. Uh, you know, we go to lots of careers fairs and, and we see some easy wins. The fire brigade come up with a fire engine, all the kids gravitate to that. And there's a lot of accountants on the call. How do you make your industry more interesting 
more exciting to young people. And being a cornerstone is a is an opportunity to do that. There are other ways that you can get involved in business without just being a cornerstone as well. You can you can volunteer to do support with events through careers hubs. The next aspect is our careers advisor, uh, sorry, our enterprise advisor network. And, and this was sort of what we, we built CEC on. It was all about enterprise advisors. And, and historically, we used to look for senior business leaders to be enterprise advisors. We found that that's not the case now. There's, there's lots of people within businesses who are more than capable of being a, an enterprise advisor. Uh, and I say that with confidence because I'm one myself uh, out at Wisbon. We think about enterprise advisors, they, I kept this first line in, world-class careers education doesn't exist without the input and insight from industry leaders. And that's really key. I was at an event a couple Better. of years ago. on the laptop now. And, and there was a, an ed teacher from one of the biggest schools in Ipswich, and he was doing a bit of a keynote. And he said, I left school, I went to college, I went to university, I did teacher training, I got a job as a teacher and I've worked my way up to a head. I have never worked outside of education. I have no idea what different jobs are out there, what different opportunities there are, what different pathways. But having an enterprise advisor in the school, being able to tell him and inform him and support him and his team has made all the difference. So there's some good opportunities. So there's some personal benefits where you can give back to your local community. You can meet new people, grow your network and improve your own skills. But there's business benefits as well. You can develop skills of the employers. Again, raise awareness of your sector. Develop closer connections with local communities. So these are some really good opportunities that you can have as as employers that's on your doorstep. You know, I can guarantee that there'll be a school probably within a mile from, from where, you're, where you all work or, or live that would welcome support in some shape or form. So that's my, my slides out of the way. And that's a bit of a, a whistle stop of, of where we are. As I said, there's lots of ways that, that you can get involved. Uh, there's a link to our website and the, the employers section there will give you links to different uh, email addresses you can use. I was going to share them, but we've got lots of different uh, departments, different career zones. So it's easy just to go to the main one. But think about what you might want to, to get from supporting the school, whether you want to do that as a business and a, a sort of wholesale thing as an ambition to become a, a cornerstone. Uh, groups of cornerstones. I, I think in Cambridge and Peterborough, we've got KPMG, uh, we've got G's Fresh, uh, and several others. Nationally, we've got lots of big organisations, lots of construction companies. There's a, a wide range of, of people that come together to do that. And also take that opportunity to look at how you might be able to support schools through volunteering for various uh, the careers events that they might have, going in and doing talks, supporting with uh, with a, a wide range of things that, that people like Anne and her team and the other careers hubs do. So I'm going to stop sharing and let's see everybody and just give everybody the opportunity to ask any questions. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, really great. Um, please, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to drop them in the chat box or equally. We're fairly informal, so if anyone wants to come off mute and and shout out a question, feel free. Um, but I think what you're saying about enterprise advisors, um, I've got a number of colleagues at First Intuition who act as enterprise advisors, and they find it really rewarding, which is one thing. I think, um, you know, if, if I would stress anything to employers, it's, you know, I think we all have a responsibility to get into schools, get into colleges, to talk to young adults, to give them up-to-date, relevant careers advice. Um, you know, often the uh, the teachers at the schools, even the careers advisors are not necessarily bang up to date with what's going on, um, particularly with areas like apprenticeships, um, you know, and they are stretched. Let's be honest, you know, teachers at school are very stretched, just covering their syllabus curriculum content. So I think it's important employers make the effort to get into schools 
an enterprise advisor is a great way to do it, but as well as helping the young adults with their careers, I think it's a great way for employers to understand what um, what young adults are thinking. It's actually a great way to get insight into young adults. So that's definitely worth doing. You also mentioned cornerstone employers. And actually, I might just unexpectedly ask my colleague Bianca if she wouldn't mind chipping in briefly, because I know Bianca's involved in cornerstone employers group, aren't you, Bianca? Yeah, so I'm actually the, <clears throat> excuse me, the chair of the um, East Anglia, New Anglia. One second, sorry. <laughs> Can you tell I haven't spoken much this morning? Fog <laughs> in the throat. Good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's just great when we come together, the the buzz in the room with all of the, the employers, um, that we all want to work towards the same goal. Everyone's got the same passion and we're not just doing it because of future talent and people actually feel like it's the right thing to do and they feel passionate about it and that really comes across and it's just really streamlined and made that process easier because I, when I speak to so many clients and they're like, oh, I'd like to speak to the schools and colleges, but they just don't know how to do that. And we can help facilitate it now. And it, it's it's just great. You know, I, I recently did a CV writing workshop with some year 10s and there was a student in there who was super quiet, super shy, sitting on his own. But I kind of went over, coached some stuff out of him. And by the end of it, he had 90% of a CV ready to go. And I just felt such a sense of achievement. And I just thought he must just feel so pleased with himself. I don't think he probably went into that thinking he's going to get anything from it. And so selfish, I get a buzz from it, but hopefully the students do as well. And it's just, this student said, oh, I speak fluent French. Do you think I should put that on my CV? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and so then I stopped the room and I was like, if you've got anything that, you know, like this, make sure you're, you're put out there. It's just getting all of that stuff out of them. So yeah, if you've got any interest of working in schools and colleges and young people, please do do it because it's just amazing brilliant thank you bianca some great insight there and thank you daryl really appreciate you kicking us off uh, this morning uh, so i'm now going to turn to dan miller who i believe is mobile somewhere with us and whose colleague susie is actually going to share some slides for him but dan can i hand over to you and susie for a, bit of a double act yeah, that's that's great. Thanks, thanks, Gareth. And hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. My name is Dan. I'm from Young Professionals. Um, so I was I was actually on the tube about five minutes ago, but I've I've made it to the client office, so I'm actually set up here. So Susie will uh, go through the slides for me. But I think just just before I do start, um, I'm going to play a a really quick video. Um, so I, I think I need to be made co-host. Do I? Do I, Gareth? Yeah, I'll make you co-host if you're going to play a video. So. You should okay. have the power now, Dan. Perfect. So uh, just before I do kind of kick off with my presentation, I thought uh, it's probably best if I share a video with you all to give you a bit of an idea uh, to who we are and uh, what we do. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd give you uh, a bit of an idea to what our events look like. So um, uh, the video that you just saw there um, actually encompasses three of our key events that we ran last year. So we ran our females in business and tech events. So we had about 800 girls come to that in-person event, followed by our Black Heritage event. We had 
around 600 black students there and then we obviously had our um, we had our big annual conference uh, at the QE2 centre with about a thousand students so um, just to kind of put it into perspective we we are in the school leaver space so we work for about 4,000 schools around the UK and Ireland um, and uh, and you know we we, we we actually run the largest school leaver events um, in the marketplace when it comes to um, social mobility events DNI events but also just general apprenticeship recruitment events um, we're in pretty much most schools around the UK so um, we're in Scotland we're in Birmingham, Newcastle, London, pretty pretty much everywhere. Uh, this is uh, the breakdown of um, all of the schools that we work with. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of the company, so I actually set the company up when I was a school even myself. Um, I didn't particularly want to go to uni, um, so I actually set the company up in Derby, which is where I'm from. Um, I was uh, I was I was in year twelve, uh, knew I didn't want to go to university, and uh, was kind of looking at alternative options. Um, you know, such as like degree apprenticeships and things. And uh, that's kind of like where the whole business grew from. So we started in the East Midlands and those sort of events that you saw there, we were running those similar sort of scale events within, within Derby, Nottingham and Leicester area. Um, when I finished my A-levels, I moved down to London. And um, if Susie, if you just go back onto the, onto the slide before, um, this is kind of like a bit of our impact report. So over the past 18 months, we've reached over 300,000 students. We work with over 4,000 schools. Um, and, and obviously we, we've, we've, we've got a great um, breakdown of, of, uh, of black heritage students, social mobility students. And uh, we not, I guess, not just, just in like the room, who, who's actually heard of young professionals? Um, I know there's some of the suppliers on here, so I, I assume you've probably heard of us, but from the employer side of things, who's, who's come across young professionals before in the past? Okay, one person, no, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's good then. So. Uh, Ah, okay. ACCA. Oh, uh, hi, hi, Lorna. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So, so, so we, um, we, we, we primarily work with brands and businesses uh, around the UK that are looking to attract and hire school leavers onto their apprenticeships or work experience programs. Um, I know that this is uh, mainly like an accounting call. So, we do have four accounting clients and just a bit of a case study this year. Across the four of those um, accounting clients we work with, they're actually going to be taking 450 people offers this year onto their apprenticeship programmes. And that's spread across the whole of the UK. So it's not just London, it's all over the UK and, you know, in, in, in some of the hardest to reach areas, um, such as like Aberdeen, Southampton, Bristol, those uh, those sort of places. So, um, so yeah, so we, we are kind of working with brands and organisations to help them with their attraction. Um, but um, yeah, Susie, if you just move on to the next slides um, and then onto the next page as well. Um, so whilst we do all of these events and attraction things and help, you know, employers um, and, you know, I, I, I don't like to say that we help employers attract the best students. It's the most engaged students and the most diverse students. And kind of our our whole philosophy and motto is, is that we never push students into our events. We never go into schools and speak to two, three hundred people at once. What we do is that what we like to do is get the five or six most engaged schools, uh, five or six most engaged students from all of the schools across the country and put them into our forum. And that's kind of the students that we're working with. Um, you know, and if they are um, from a social mobility background, that's great. If they're from an independent school as well, that's also great. We do work with all students from, from across the UK um, on all of the programs that we run and operate with. Um, this is really exciting what we're doing. So um, I'm not sure if any of you guys are, are working with jobs boards at the moment, uh, but we've just recently acquired apprenticeships.co.uk and we're actually launching the ultimate apprenticeship and school leaver jobs board uh, that's coming in September time. So all of the clients that we work with, so all of the accounting firm, and the tech firms that we work with, are all kind of getting behind this initiative um, from September time. And uh, this was kind of driven off feedback from students within our network. They wanted to have a centralized place where they could apply for work experience programs, apprenticeship programs, kind of all under one roof in a really cool and innovative way. So I'm only 25 myself. And, you know, the demographics that we're working with are like Gen Z's, young people. Um, so I'd like to think that we are quite, quite, quite a cool techie company where we're doing some really, some really amazing things in this space. Um, all of the branding, the design, the video that you saw, we do it all in-house. Um, so if any of you guys have got um, employee branding teams that are looking to engage Gen Zs, um, you know, I like to think we know what we're doing. We've got just shy of 50,000 followers on Instagram. Um, that's pretty much where all the school leavers are. And, you know, we, we, we do have one of the biggest followings on social media in our, in our space. And I guess just onto the last slide. Um, if any of you are interested in, uh, in, 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 in kind of working with us, um, this is kind of just a bit of an overview of everything that we offer. So we offer school leaver events, attraction events. Uh, we do uh, work experience, face-to-face uh, -face or virtual. Um, I can't remember the last time we've had less than a thousand young people online to a virtual event that we've ran, uh, which, is, uh, which, is, which is really incredible. I'm actually sat with a client today where, where, where we're running uh, an insurance uh, kind of um, work experience two-day event. So we do do in-person things. 
Um, and then obviously we've got our jobs board, which is the apprenticeship advertising and recruitment. And we also do um, outsourced uh, recruitment. So we've got an RPO team. We've also got digital career sites that we build for clients that maybe are wanting to set up their um, centralized early careers uh, websites. We build those as well as um, doing all of the creative and uh, video production as well. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of a little bit about myself. I do have my colleague Susie on the call who I know is going to stick around for a little bit longer and she'll pop some links into the chat box. Uh, we do have a videos page. So if any of you want to check out our videos, um, but um, but yeah, hopefully hopefully I've got the brief right, Gareth. I've given everyone a bit of an overview to, to young professionals and things. But um, but I think what's um, what's really important, probably not many of you do know about us on the call because we've grown the business very organically. So the way that we've grown the business, it's been through people moving around in the industry. So a lot of you won't have heard of us because we've probably never reached out to you before. So, um, you know, we are starting to come to more forums like this, putting our brand out there and, uh, and uh, you know, talking a little bit more about a bit about what we do. So, um, so yeah. Happy to take any questions, but other than that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to also hand back over to Gareth. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, really appreciate your time this morning. A uh, great overview. And I think, you know, the purpose of this, uh, this particular session and a lot of the other stuff we'll be doing is trying to ensure that because you've got this situation where young adults and employers are often not in the same places. Um, and, you know, it sounds like you've got an awful lot of young adults in a place that employers perhaps need to need to be recognising. So thanks for that overview. Um, you know, if anyone has any questions, I mean, Dan's going to be popping off now, but Susie will be uh, hanging around so she can hopefully uh, help with any questions and post a few resources. because she, She's already doing that. But Dan, thank you very, very much. Good luck with the rest of your day. I hope it goes extremely well. Um, but I'm now going to come to... Laura, Laura Morris from Speakers for Schools, which actually is an organisation that I've had a, a lot of contact with in the last sort of, three years or so. So, Laura, can I ask you to, to take over at this stage? Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, everybody. Um, lovely to be here. Um, I'm really excited to come and be able to talk to everyone this morning um, to go through a little bit more about who we are and what we do. So, um, so hopefully you can all hear me all right and see my screen, etc. Perfect. Thanks, Gareth. Um, so my name's Laura Morris. As I say, I'm here from Speakers for Schools. Um, my role is head of engagement. So I look after all of the activities that we do in East Midlands and East Anglia. Um, but we are a, we are a national charity. Um, the ethos of what we do is very much about empowering those young people from state schools and colleges to actually inspire them, reach their potential and sort of allow them to really find out what they don't know, because we all know you don't know what you don't know. And that's very much what, what we're here for, um, is to provide these individuals with these opportunities that they would maybe not be able to access otherwise, um, to give them a chance to see what's out there and find out a little bit more about the world of work. Um, when I say an opportunity, um, that could be um, an inspirational talk, it could be uh, you know, a short session, or it could be more of your traditional kind of work experience, you know, a week placement, for example. Um, but everything that we, we offer, um, we want it to be accessible, good quality, and actually career enhancing. So it allows someone to find out a bit more about a particular sector, for example. Um, as I mentioned, we are um, a nationwide charity, so we cover all across the, across the board with Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales and England. Um, the premise behind what we do is that it's great for a young person to obviously find out about the world of work, but it's also great for a business to be able to find out about their local talent. Um, so it's very much for a, for a business. It could be people work with us for... Um, for example, it could be to actually find out about talent in their region, to promote apprenticeship programmes that they have. So they use it as part of their early talent pipeline, bit of brand awareness with their audience, for example. Or it could be because actually, you know, you recognise maybe there's a, a shortage of a particular um, type of person that you want coming into your industry. Or maybe people don't have a clue about your industry at all. Um, you know, we look at things like construction and we, we do some myth busting around the fact that actually it's not all, not all hard hats and diggers. You know, it's actually there's a lot more to it, a lot more different departments that go into it and everything. Um, you know, so that's very much about what we are about. We work with um, an awful lot of schools and colleges, as I say, throughout the country. Um, but our focus is very much about that social mobility piece. So we are our primary audience are those young people who are aged 14 to 19. 
um, and who tend to come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, so we focus, for example, on free school meals. Um, that's you know a key indicator for us. Um, so when someone applies to take part in one of the opportunities that you know will work with an employer to deliver, um, you know we get that that information through from the young person or from the educator about whether they um, they're on free school meals, for example, because that can just help us to to identify who our audience is um, and what impact we're making in the the groups that we want. Um, as I mentioned, when I say opportunity, um, and this is what an employer can deliver to engage with a young person, um, we tend to work in, in three different ways. So we have very much our, what we call our taster sessions, uh, discovery sessions, short, sharp, top overview, might be just a, a, you know, this is an engineering firm, these are the sorts of roles that, that we have, um, real top level kind of stuff. Um, so normally, you know, one or two hours on average, to be honest, for a, for a discovery session. Um, and that is where you, it could be done virtually or it could be done in person. If it's done in person, obviously you'll go into a, into a school, for example. Um, if it's done um, virtually, then um, it will be a teacher who is logged into a session very much like this. Um, and then they, they will share their screen with their with their class. Um, now, the beauty of it is that could be multiple classrooms. So when it comes to particularly across the East region, we know that we've got uh, you know, areas that are potentially, you know, you look at the fens where it's quite remote and actually, you know, it can be quite hard to get that engagement piece with employers. Um, so things like that actually working virtually can work quite well. Um, and for an employer perspective, you don't have to go in just to one school. You can then touch base to, to multiple schools all at the same time and then the students still have an opportunity to, to ask questions as well. Um, we do also do, um, I'm going to skip over to, to number three that's on the screen um, where we're talking about virtual sessions um, because we do also do more of your in-depth work experience so that could be up to as I say about five days or you know or it could be something like every Monday for six weeks for example um, and that could be where a young person is logged in directly if it's virtual um, and then they are they share their screen. Um, you know, the employer will share their screen and still do presentations, but then the young people will work together perhaps in groups on particular tasks or a project and then maybe present back at the end, for example. Um, but the beauty of that is that actually you're going to get young people from all these different schools, up, potentially up and down the country if you wanted. Um, and for those young people, it might be the very first time that they've worked with someone that they've not met before, uh, that's outside of their initial class, for example. So that can be great for building those softer skills that we all want to see as we move forward and, you know, into business and when we recruit as well. Um, we do also do in-person placements. They are becoming a lot more popular. Um, and our ask, I think, moving into the next academic year is going to be to looking for businesses to actually put on more in-person placements as well as these virtual offering that we've traditionally been doing over the last few years. Um, I think everyone's moving towards that now. Um, so that could be a site visit. That could be actually a, a presentation. It could be just a day in your business. It could be a week in your business. Um, so all of that we can do um, we will advertise. I know you touched upon jobs board. Um, we can work very much in a similar way. We have an online portal where our opportunities are advertised and the young people then apply directly. Um, the application gets approved by their teacher and then approved by the employer. Um, and then they can then come on to the, the placement itself. So it just takes out some of that who you know factor um, because obviously the ethos of what we do is we're trying to level that educational playing field and we don't want it to be you know Barbara's from finance you know their son gets to come in on a placement because they know her we want it to be a lot more neutral and give the opportunities to those that that potentially will need it the most so the reasons why a lot of organizations will will work with us um in particularly in regards to that that talent pipeline piece that we've mentioned, um, you know, it can help with meeting, you know, your, your CSR targets, etc. Um, as you develop that that pipeline. Um, but actually, as an organisation, speaks for schools have the capability and the capacity to actually help you to um, to tailor what it is that you offer as well. Um, so we will, you know, we can work with you to make sure that what you offer is in line to match your own business requirements, as well as matching what, you know, what our people on the ground are telling us that the young people want. 
we have teams that work with employers, we have teams that work with educators, and then we have teams that do all the, the technical know-how in the background, particularly for our, our virtual placements there as well. Um, so we try and take a lot of the stress out of delivering work experience, a lot of that safeguarding, GDPR, all of that. Um, that's where we will come in as the experts to, to help along the way. Um, and it allows you to actually obviously manage your work experience offer neutrally and just gain an insight into your impact. We can provide all of that data back to you in terms of an impact report as well. So if you want, you can report back to you know the powers that be or the board, for example. Uh, you know if you um, if you need to demonstrate the impact of what your what your placements and your activity has taken. Um, so, I mean, it's primarily is 14 to 19 year olds. Um, and as I say, it's a safeguarded way for young people to, to access these opportunities. Um, we offer four levels of support. So absolutely, employers can work with us for free. And um, the purpose of being a charity is that we don't want money to be a barrier. Um, but absolutely, we do have fully managed packages too. So we have the whole spectrum, whether you want to do and you know, want to place them for free or actually it's part of a core piece of your activity and your recruitment process. You might want to plan a series of activities, a series of opportunities over an academic year. Um, and we can support you with that in, in terms of the content, the mix of whether it's virtual, in person, a bit of both. Um, and then in terms of, you know, what activities you might want to consider um, and that impact reporting piece, all of that, uh, we can do all of that, that for you as well. So there's options depending on, on what it is you're after, really, is what I would say. Um, now, I was going to show a quick video. Um, I'm mindful of time. It is only two minutes in length. So I'm going to do my best to see whether this will work. If not, I'll pop it in the chat. So just bear with me one moment. And Gareth, I can see you on the screen. So if you can hear the sound, can you give me a thumbs I've up? I've literally burst into tears. I loved it. Sugar, no sugar, tea, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> What's my work experience story? I went into a kitchen to wash up. I worked in a huge slightly crumbling hospital. I did some bingo calling, hot washing, leading ponies up and down Minehead Seafront. I did work experience in a solicitor's office for a week. I went to a place called Codemasters. I thought it was going to be a week of playing games. I made a lot of teas. I remember walking in thinking, this is what I want. And that didn't change for 30 years. I'm not a tea drinker. I suddenly became a pastry chef overnight, even though with zero pastry skills. I wasn't a coffee drinker either. And it was like the matrix. There was all codes coming down the screen. He goes, right, you're going to sit here and you're going to help them input code. I uh, fell asleep at reception. This is coding, buddy. That's what you're here for. It was the most boring three days of my life. And then I got woken up by one of the PAs. She went, Rosie, Rosie. You're not allowed to sleep here. I remember one project that I was given. They thought she probably won't be able to do it and it doesn't matter. This other student had, had fainted spectacularly with a huge thunk on the floor. And it ended up saving the company lots of money. And they were like, wow. And this student was dragged out by his heels. I was shoved forward. It kind of teaches you about the fact of life and a career in the space of a week. Without work experience, I don't think I would be doing the job that I do. As a child, you have this kind of sketch of what you think life is going to be like. You do work experience, it colours it in. That's when you grow. That is absolutely when you grow. I still sometimes think, I know why I know that. I know that because of the bingo. And these are skills that are, are valuable, whatever you end up doing. Everything, no matter if it's positive or negative, is a lesson. That's part of the reason why work experience is so important and has such an impact. Even now, I don't really understand what coding is. There okay, you go. So hopefully that provides a little bit of an indication as to, you know, why we want to share and make everyone have a work experience opportunity. So if you've got any questions, I'll hang around um, and um, do pop them in the chat. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you, Laura. And that video is a fantastic way to, to tail off your session. Really inspiring, actually. And again, I think just going back to what I said earlier, really emphasizes the need for employers to get involved and to make the, you know, spare the time and just to get in there and talk to uh, young adults, provide work experience. You talked a bit about the virtual work experience. And I'm sure some employers would be a little bit kind of put off by the idea of virtual work experience. But I know, um, I mean, there was a lot of interest, obviously, back in 2020, because of the pandemic and the lockdowns. And I've heard some fantastic stories. I think it was, was it Morgan Sindel, I think, construction, yeah. who 
experimented with virtual work experience and found that it increased their reach so much that they stuck with it even when we've gone back to more normal times so um definitely worth employers considering so thank you very much laura um yeah so if anyone's got any questions for laura please put them in the chat box but i'm gonna move swiftly on to christos from get my first job and the talent people so christoph can i uh, hand over to you at that point you can um and hopefully we'll get everything working so I'm going to ask Sam again, then Gareth, give me the thumbs up. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like how you've got a new job here, Gareth, just doing the thumbs up. Um, cool. So thank you, everyone. Um, and good to see so many familiar faces. Um, thanks for all the kind of messages um, in the chat. So I'm here today from Talent People and Get My First Job. So we've got two names because we like to confuse people um, even more. So I know, Gareth, we kind of, you invited us to kind of your last insight session, really, where we kind of shared a lot of stats around kind of the space. So I just thought I'd kind of pull a few key stats out, really. There was a lot from there. So yeah, I just thought I'd pull a few key ones out. We know at the moment in the market, up to about 70% of candidates are using a kind of Apple mobile device in their job hunt, which presents all sorts of challenges for kind of employers and making that mobile friendly. We know up to about 50% of young adults don't actually have a CV um, on Get My First Job, which presents, again, a bit of the challenge, especially for employers that have kind of got that CV built into that process and what that can kind of present for some for some candidates and we know behind that UCAS for example is really looking at the moment around changing that personal statement um, and updating that process so that kind of whole traditional CV and cover letter is certainly a challenge at the moment and I'm not even going to get the conversation of AI going at the moment either um, and then last but not least we certainly know kind of renege rates um, so that point and kind of candidates accepting an offer and then later declining um, is another challenge that employers are facing. So we know there's a lot going on in the market. I myself have been in this space for about 10 years and I've never seen so much kind of challenge facing employers really and kind of what it, what it means from that inspiration and schools engagement, which we spoke about today, right through to that kind of selection and recruitment process. So kind of telling people get my first job exists as a social enterprise. Our kind of vision is a world um, where kind of people from every background can get into the world of work and connect with employers that are right for them, really. So we've been doing it for about 10 years. Um, Talent People is our kind of B2B name. And a lot of you probably know us by Get My First Job. Um, we do quite a lot in the accountancy um, kind of business and finance space. Um, so I'm not going to say hello to quite a few people on this call, but I will say a shout out to Anthony Clark from AAT. Um, so we've got a really amazing partnership with AAT and then we do quite a lot of work with both employers so you'll see like RSM, Buzzercott, Marsh McLennan etc and then we also work with training providers as well like Kaplan, BPP etc. Thanks Anthony for the thumbs up. So we'll do a lot of work directly with employers um, and particularly larger employers and we tend to work with a lot of SMEs by their kind of colleges and training providers. All our solutions are bespoke right from kind of schools engagement and work experience all the way through to kind of end-to-end -end candidate management really. And a lot of you, like I said, may particularly know us by Get My First Job. So Get My First Job's been going for about 10 years. I think what's interesting for us is we see that kind of accountancy and finance space, a really popular one at the moment. So, you know, we know a lot of employers are having a real challenge recruiting, but what we said is, what we see from our side is a real appetite for that accountancy space. So something's not quite connecting um, in that space, really. A lot of people kind of know us by Get My First Job and as a job board, but like I said earlier, we do the whole end-to-end -end piece really, and we're really pleased this year to be shortlisted for a couple of awards with the Institute of Student Employers, including kind of best partnership. So we work very, very closely with our employers um, and also best assessment and selection process. So we ran a project with Microsoft where we did a work experience um, program before they launched their apprenticeship recruitment. Um, and we found that had a real impact on kind of candidates and their confidence in that process. So that, um, Gareth is an absolute whistle stop introduction, conscious of time, um, and I'll hand back to you for any questions. Super, thank you very much, Christos. So, can you, can, if um, employers, you know, want to take a sort of next step on how they can actually make um, effective use of the the platform and get in front of the right uh, audience, I mean, what would you suggest would be the sort of next steps for them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just reach out for a conversation. You know, we know every employer is really different. Um, so we don't kind of offer off the shelf solutions, just kind of reach out. We can set up an insight session. We can share more of those stats, Gareth, which we shared on the last session. And then we can look into kind of any solutions, really. And we also run a roundtable community each month where we have about 30 employers get together and just discuss challenges. 
Fantastic. Thank you very much, Christos. Well, feel free to drop, you know, any links, collateral contacts uh, for people to, to follow up. Hopefully this session is already whetting appetites of employers as to different um, platforms, different uh, approaches they can take to their, their talent pipeline. So I appreciate that, Christos. Um, any questions at this stage for Christos on what he was just talking about? Feel free to come off mute or drop into the chat box. Well, Christos, if you're happy to keep an eye on the chat box, if anyone does throw any questions in there. But um, I'm now going to come over to Rebecca, Rebecca Dunn from Not Going to Uni. So, Rebecca, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're Yes, what I'm just going to start sharing my screen. I am here, even though you can't see me, I'm having technical issues, but I think I can share my screen. So that should be, let me just present. Hold on a second. Ah, super. Yeah, I can see that, Rebecca. So there's always a few tech gremlins, aren't there? <laughs> Literally. Um, I think it should work now. Um, yeah, can you see the full screen now? Yes, there you go. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, great. So, not going to uni. Ultimately, asking the question here, if you want to get in front of top um, Gen Z talent, if you're open with opportunities, then come and see us at not going to uni. So, I want to tell you all about that. Ultimately, with a Gen Z recruitment marketing agency. So we do a bit of recruitment and marketing. It's a bit of like a, we've evolved over the years. So ultimately, since 2008, we were just a jobs board and advice hub, meaning that literally you can post your job opportunities on the website. You can advertise um, you know, what you've got going, uh, whether it be work experience, apprenticeships, traineeships, first time jobs, gap years, anything really that you've kind of got going uh, for the young audience, 16 to 24 year olds. Um, you can advertise with us. You can also do like blogs and case studies. <clears throat> um, and ultimately just giving advice. We work with a lot of different ambassadors who will be representing different sectors. So we've got a couple actually in the accountancy and finance who will just be sharing different bits of information about, you know, how they got into their role, what they found interesting, different tips of you know, being in the sector and things like that, which is quite useful. So I suppose our, our main first product kind of thing is our website which we looked after very much and um, when you come on here as well you obviously get a profile where you then you can post unlimited jobs on there um, and you get your profile which just has a bit more information about who you are what you do where you're based everything like that it's all in one place um, yep and then you can post unlimited opportunities as I said and then when you post your jobs as well you get the opportunity to feature on different parts of the website and I suppose the benefit of that is that is, as I'll talk about later on about Gen Z. Gen Z are what we call in a nice way, they're pretty lazy, you know, they want everything to come to them rather than looking for everything themselves. So how we use that on our website is put in, you can feature your opportunities at the top of the website on the homepage. As you see here, there's a little featured here. So this company is obviously paid to have their opportunity at the top of the opportunities page. Um, you can do it on specific sectors as well. So in the accountancy and finance sector, where there's um, quite a lot, you might want to have your opportunity at the top of that sector so that anyone that's coming on and they know they're interested in accountancy and finance, they go straight to there and then they can see you before they see any of your competitors. Um, so that's quite a nice way to just get in front of the audience. We then have um, the bits that go with it. Um, so we have a targeted campaign. So this can be targeted emails. So we have, I mean, we engage with around 75,000 16 to 24 year olds each month. From that, you can delve down into certain areas. So whether it be, and, you know, in social mobility factors or location factors or gender or diversity, whatever you kind of are looking for, you can do targeted emails and um, you can also do targeted social media. And that's literally across every single platform. Um, and we can also guide you in which platform might be best, considering, you know, what, what kind of um, things you offer and what your kind of um, content you've got. We can help you with that. Um, and again, that's kind of quite flexible. So you can literally you, you decide the ad spend you want to put on that um, across which channel, as I said. And then we manage that for you. We then have organic social as well. So we love our social media, we're all over it. And um, we also collaborate with a lot of different influencers and ambassadors in the space to obviously just represent different sectors again, as I said. Um, and you can then get involved in that and obviously share on our social media with regards to your opportunities or what you're doing in the space or if you've got anything new coming up, just to kind of get your name in front of the audience, which works quite well because obviously we've got that audience you're looking for. We then have our newest part of the business, which is our creative arm. So ultimately, we have an in-house in um, content production team. 
And then we work with not going to new ambassadors and content creators. And ultimately, the aim is to give you some engaging content, which is Gen Z focused. Um, and then it helps you to inspire young people to take the first step into the next part of their career with confidence they can see what you're doing. Um, and we found this out a lot because, you know, Gen Z want to see things. They don't always want to just read it. They want to see it and you've got to be engaging. And that's one way you have you're going to be different. Ultimately, by having some engaging content, it's going to make someone stop scrolling down their Instagram feed and stop and take a second to actually watch a video um, or whether it be on YouTube or, you know, whatever you want it to be. It's about engaging and getting in front of the audience, which are literally all over technology these days. Um, so some of the examples of what we do, you can see we've got day in the life of videos, um, which they work really nicely. So obviously when um, we've got a lot of feedback from this from different clients, because when you're when you're new to a, an opportunity and if you're a young person, you know, it's scary, scary. Some of these people haven't done work experience, so they don't know what it's like to go and work in, a, in an office at London or whatever. So when we give them a day in the life of video, they can kind of see that and they can kind of resonate with the people that are showing them around, uh, which works quite nice. There's then obviously social media content shoots, live streams, a podcast and vidcast, talking heads, still event photography. We do um, virtual events as well. We do them like three times a year um, and employers get the chance to be involved in that and you can sponsor a session. And in that, you then get the chance to talk to the audience about everything you've got to offer at that, you know, what jobs are, that you've got basically going live. So we've got one um, in August for clearing. So ultimately you're able to get involved um, and talk about the opportunities that you've got that will be going live in August this year. Um, so some of the clients that we work with, and um, there's a wide range, we literally work with all different sectors um, from the big names to the smaller names. Um, some of them work on us for years, some of them are more new. Um, yeah, we've got training providers as well on colleges, we're all nationwide. We then have, um, looking at accountancy more specifically, um, you know, Deloitte, EY, uh, Pro, LTSD. You can obviously see there's a massive range there. We've worked with them on different things. So you can see the FCA put um, up some vlogs. They've got a profile. Then obviously Deloitte, they wanted to do a live stream event and they've done quite a lot of content creation. Um, we're working on some podcasts as well. So it's quite, um, quite a cool space to be in in regards to the content side of things. Um, it's all about that and then using that to get across. So ultimately, if you want to get involved in that as well, if you want to find out more information, drop us an email and um, follow us on social media, give us a call, get in touch with me directly as well. My email is there and I'll share this presentation afterwards. But ultimately, yeah, we're there to kind of help you just with your brand and get in touch with the right audience and get some applications for your opportunities. Um, and before I stop, I did just want to ask, uh, well, not ask, I wanted to say, um, I know that there was, um, speaking to Gareth and there was some interest to understand about Gen Z and what they're looking for. I've mentioned it a little bit, um, but in terms of some other bits that we know, um, you know, Gen Z place a lot of importance on the meaningful work and having a good work-life ba work balance in regards to obviously now having more flexible working as well and, and having the chance to work virtually or have like, you know, two days in the office and three days at home, et cetera. Um, also, a lot of them are quite prone to anxiety. So it's like 29% uh, are prone to anxiety we found in research. So um, it's obviously good to have a work-life balance to be able to help that. Um, and also some de developmental opportunities. Um, and lastly as well, um, with regards to podcasts, they've become um, very popular. There's around two thirds of Gen Z listening to pod podcasts weekly. So they're on their commute or when they're going out, when they're away to college, et cetera. So that's why podcasts are drawing up so much. Um, and yeah, it's a great thing to get involved in. So do you want one then get in touch. Um, but yeah, ultimately I'll share everything with Gareth so he can share it with you. If you want to get in touch or ask any questions, just drop it in the chat and I'll be hanging around. So, yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Rebecca. Much appreciate. And particularly, I love that insight at the end there around. I mean, I talk to employers you know, across the country and I'm hearing a lot around just changes they're having to make into their recruitment processes, the way they're trying mm -hmm. to retain, particularly, you know, younger adults that have come into their workplace, some of the differences in their you know, their backgrounds, their priorities, you know, what drives them, as you say, I think, you know, the likes of EDI, sustainability, you know, yeah. very, very important to to young adults um, and something that therefore employers have to reflect in their own, you know, missions and values. Yeah. Um, exactly. You know, if they want to recruit and retain. And actually, I'm, I'm thinking we've got some great experience on the call. So I, I think we've still got Christos, uh, Laura, Susie on the call, who I might come back to in a minute or so just to see if they've got any similar insight to what Rebecca's just shared. So I'll give them a minute or so just to gather mm -hmm. their thoughts on anything they've seen from their perspective in the last couple of years. But um, 
Christos actually mentioned the AAT, and actually I might come to Anthony Clark actually, because although I think what we're talking about this morning is relevant to all sectors, any employers trying to engage with young adults, you know, I am in the accountancy and finance sector, we've seen a big shift in the last few years towards school leaver programmes being as important, if not more important than graduate programmes, and that has seen a consequent increase in the use of apprenticeships, particularly at levels two, three and four, uh, and a consequent increase in the use of the AAT, which is a great entry level accountancy technician qualification that often brings young adults into the accountancy profession and they often move on to higher level qualifications like ICA, WACCA, SEMA. Um, but I know we've got Anthony Clark with us this morning. So I thought, Anthony, just, just w whether you've got any insight on the sort of platforms you think employers of uh, young adults really need to be engaging with. Um, morning, Gareth. I would have put on a, a better shirt if I'd known you were going to call me on. So, <laughs> You're uh, never going to compete with everybody. me, Anthony. <laughs> well, <on>. no, no <laughs> chance. Um, I think let's, um, I, I'll take it back a couple, couple of steps to start with. I think we have seen uh, within, specifically within the accounting profession, real competition, whether it be school leaver grad or qualified roles over the last few years. And I know that practices are doing a lot more to look at how they can better engage with young people, um, especially around that school leaver um, sort of area where we have seen some really significant growth with apprenticeships. Um, the, the overarching feedback we're getting this year from clients is that those that have really upped their engagement with local schools has really helped them with their recruitment efforts this year. Something that's worked particularly well has been uh, utilising current apprentices or people that have recently been on that journey. You know, it's all well and good myself going out to a school saying you should all become accountants. They're not going to listen to an old bloke like me, but having um, individuals that have uh, are going through that journey at the moment to really engage with people of a similar generation. Um, we're seeing a lot more of um, apprentices that are going back to their old schools and talking to, to sort of current students about that. I think something that's come out earlier in this um, in this session has been that school um, careers provision in schools is really, really stretched. Uh, we're getting a lot of feedback. We work with a lot of multi-academy trusts who just happen to take on lots of accountancy apprenticeships and trying to work better with them. Uh, but it's often, you know, in my daughter's school, head of history is also head of careers. And you can imagine she's, she's very much stretched with, uh, with the academic teaching. So I think employers coming to schools, being able to give them that solution actually look we've got some great people here that can come and talk to you about opportunities uh, within the profession is really really valued um, I think all of the uh, all of the platforms that we, we've heard about today I know clients and, and as we've seen during this clients are using all of those different platforms the only other one that I would mention who have really upped their game in terms of apprenticeship advice over the last 18 months would be UCAS they are becoming a lot lot better at um promoting the opportunities outside of, uh, of just going down the normal degree um, university routes um, goes without saying social media um, making sure that there's that clear bite-sized information that's available on demand making sure there's that always on presence so that um, you know often people will be flicking on their phone whilst they're on the train or on a bus or on their way to school really making sure you've got some quick easily digestible content that they can that, that will stick with them um, I think one of the challenges we have within the accountancy profession is telling the story that it's not now just about being stuck in a darkened room, um, you know, smashing data into Excel day after day after day and not really getting to see anybody and really looking at those different stories that employers have got within their own firms and what they're allowing their apprentices to do because there's some some amazing stories out there. So. Yeah, that was a that was a bit of a brain dump there, Gareth. But hopefully, uh, hopefully a few bits. Any questions on that at all? No, thank you, Anthony. Uh, great for you to give a shout out to you, Cass, actually, because they're next on the lineup, actually. Oh. And I'm re I'm extremely excited I didn't plan actually, that about at all, the. So the developments um, that we'll be hearing about in terms of uh, UCAS's uh, website and events, but I won't steal uh, Lindsay's uh, uh, thunder quite yet. I'm really excited to hear from them in a, in a few minutes. I think what you're saying about getting the right people in front of young adults, you know, I've attended lots of employer presentations where they wheel out the managing partner. And whilst you could argue it's great that somebody of that seniority is committing the time to that sort of engagement, is it really going to be relatable uh, to young adults at school? Um, I've heard the, the phrase near peers 
a lot in the last couple of years, you know, so maybe get an apprentice in front of the young adults who's only been in the firm a couple of years, or, you know, they talk a lot about relatable role models that can therefore appeal to a wider, you know, variety of young adults. I think what you're saying about social media, you know, how many employers, I mean, we, there, there was talk a few minutes ago about podcasts, how many employers have a podcast aimed at young adults? First intuition do. How many employers though? Uh, how many employers have a TikTok you know, feed, you know, first intuition do, but I'm not sure a lot of accountancy firms, for instance, will have a TikTok account aimed at young adults. You know, we have our younger colleagues who will post content on our TikTok accounts. So yeah, some, some great insight there, Anthony. And I'm just wondering whether, just to, to round off this phase, whether Christos or Susie, do you have any sort of insight that employers might find useful on changes in the last couple of years? I'd, I'd just say from my side, um, Gareth, there's certainly, I haven't been in this space 10 years, I've never seen so many employers oh, really so looking at the recruitment process. Um, so I ran a roundtable on this last month and only 10% of employers were saying they were going to keep the same recruitment process this year compared to next. So I think that whole CV and things like cover letters and the kind of advent of AI is really having an impact at the moment. So I know we've spoken a lot today around inspiration schools work experience attraction but just don't forget that kind of funnel bit at the end which can kind of undo a lot of that great work is certainly what i would keep advocating and kind of shouting about really fantastic thank you christos well any other input from anyone at this stage and feel free if you are seeing you know any new uh trends and themes with the young adults that you're interviewing or recruiting feel free to post it through the chat box but I'd like to move on now and we've given her a bit of a trail there um, and I'm particularly excited because last Monday actually uh, I was at the AELP national conference and there was a roundtable discussion on the stage with some quite senior figures including our next speaker and in fact I came away it's probably one of the highlights of my day actually was hearing from Lindsay about the changes um, with UCAS um, and I don't want to steal your thunder with the statistic here but I'm going to that one of the statistics that Lindsay quoted was that I think 94% I think of school teachers are confident giving advice to young adults on university applications probably unsurprising because they've been doing it forever but only 24% of teachers are confident giving advice about apprenticeships um, so there's still a huge divide in I think the advice young adults are getting at school and college around potential pathways into careers. I think a real game changer is going to be some of the changes that UCAS have been already and are continuing to put into place, which if nothing else is probably going to force the change at schools for the kind of advice that they're going to be giving. But without further ado, I would love to hand over to Lindsay. Thanks so much. Um, it's it's great to be here, and um, thank you, Gareth, and, and also to Anthony for the the shout out. Um, hopefully, you can see that I've shared a PowerPoint presentation. Um, please, someone say if you can't see it. Um, for those I don't know on the call, I'm Lindsay Conroy. I'm the program lead um, for apprenticeships at UCAS. Essentially, I'm heading up all of the work that we're doing. We're making a huge investment into an apprenticeships offer for our student audience, and um, the work that we're doing sits within my remit. So it's um, absolutely great to be here really pleased to talk to you all um, I'm going to jump straight in because there's a, quite a few bits to take you through I want to talk to you about our audience our reach um, some of the insights that we've got and then probably share a couple of videos uh, with some of the offers that, that we can help with um, so jumping straight in um, first of all really just to talk about UCAS and um, the reach of, that we have to the audience uh, people typically recognize UCAS as the application service to undergraduates um, that certainly shifted in the time that I've been with UCAS so I've been here now for about two years I've joined from the apprenticeship sector um, to lead on this work and we've done a uh, huge amount in the last 18 months to really shift the brand and to work on the information and advice and guidance for our student audience. We are the most recognised brand in the education sector. We are more utilised uh, than Google for anything to do with education in the UK. Um, we have a huge amount of brand trust with our student audience. Uh, so in our recent impact report released in December 2022, students told us they record um, they 
uh, trusted UCAS with their data more than they trust their high street bank or the BBC and on par with how much they trust the NHS. Um, so we've got a huge amount of trust with our student audience and, and a significant reach across four and a half thousand schools and colleges in the UK. Um, we see about a quarter of a million students each year at our in-person discovery events um, with about one and a half million new registrants on our student hub, our logged in environment each year and about 60 million unique visits on UCAS.com each year. So uh, a really significant reach. And why that's important is that UCAS is an independent charity. We're not, as some people think, you know, any kind of arm of the government. We are absolutely an independent charity. So we are here to respond to what students are, are wanting from us. Um, and overwhelmingly, what they're asking us for is information on apprenticeships. So last year in 2022, our apprenticeship job platform had nearly 7 million views um, from students and you can see here this is the number of students each year taken at equal consideration deadline which is the deadline um, for application to university to be equally considered by institutions. Um, this is the number of students interested in apprenticeships at that deadline each year over the cycle for the last three years. So you can see we've seen a really huge growth um, from 2021 up to this year in January, where there are about 430,000 students that told us, hey, can you give us some more information about apprenticeships, please? We're really interested. We know from talking to students they don't get the information that they need. Um, I won't go through all of these, but Gareth very kindly gave you the um, advisor confidence stat, which uh, is not a surprise. Teachers know how to support people into the university pathway. They don't know how to support people into the apprenticeship pathway typically. And that's because, you know, teachers have all gone through that university pathway. So it's, it's understandable. But equally, we know that students don't feel that they get sufficient information about apprenticeships at, at school or college. Uh, one in three say they don't get what they need to make an informed decision. We know that less than half of students who apply for an apprenticeship after school or college have a positive experience in that application. Um, and we know that a number of students close doors to potential careers as early as GCSE option stage because they don't feel informed. And then finally, we know there's some issues in terms of how people perceive apprenticeships in the market. Do they perceive they perceive university as being the gold standard and apprenticeships as perhaps um, somewhat behind university? And that's what we're really working to change at UCAS. And then we also know from a huge piece of insight work we did in 2021 that the student journey is really difficult for an apprenticeship. Firstly, they don't know that they can do an apprenticeship to reach the, the job or the career they're looking for. Then if they find an, um, that they can do an apprenticeship, they tend to have to do their research in silo without support from teachers. Then when it comes to navigating the search for apprenticeships, they find it incredibly stressful because the landscape is, is very disparate and students worry they might miss opportunities. Then moving on, application methods are, are different between employers and this causes um, stress and challenges for young people. And then, of course, the interview process can be really arduous for, you know, for a young person. I talk regularly to um, young people who have maybe gone through seven, eight, nine stage interview processes at the time when perhaps they're doing their A-levels, you know, without the support of how to be successful in these interviews. So there's some real challenges for young people, which is absolutely what UCAS is looking to address. So we focused really heavily in the last 18 months on our information and advice and guidance to young people and how we can help employers and providers reach the audience as well. So I am going to see if this video will play. This is um, just a short video from Sky, who's a customer that works with us, just talking about some of the work we've done to help them reach the audience. We haven't got the audio, I don't think, Lindsay. No audio. I did wonder if that would be the case. I'm not quite sure how to, to change that. Um, I think when you when you go through the share... I can share sound. Yeah. Got it. Sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. Around ...about apprenticeships. That's something that we wanted to tackle. UCAS were setting up a feature on their website so that you would see degrees and apprenticeships side by side while searching for opportunities and it just sounded perfect for what we're, we're trying to do. 
My apprenticeship has genuinely been the best way to start my career. I've made so many new friends and I've learned so much both professionally and personally. I think UCAS having a one-stop shop for apprenticeships with links to where to apply and having all the information would be a really good idea because when I was researching I was going from website to website, I didn't really have a sort of centralised place. I think it's great to have one place that you can just turn to for all your apprenticeship needs. I definitely recommend using their services. They're the go-to for any young person who's deciding their future. Sorry about the sound there. And let's just skip on to the next slide. OK, so um, th that was Sky. I have to say that wasn't actually scripted. You might think that it might have been, but we uh, we spent a day with Sky just asking them about some of the things that they'd found really helpful and all of that came out really naturally. Um, and they've worked really closely with us on a, a number of um, different campaigns. So just to touch on some of the things that um, they spoke about in that video. Uh, so the first one is our employer profile. So these are profile pages to um, give employers a platform to showcase their organisations to the audience. So 60 million unique visitors to UCAS each year and employer profiles can become a part of um, the journey. They are free at the point of entry for employers. There, is, there are obviously some um, enhancements that you can purchase for the employer profiles and including towards the end of this year, any vacancies that you've got will also show in, in the profiles as well. Um, and then we have our Career Finder. So Career Finder is our apprenticeship search tool. We recently launched a beta tool for this one. Um, the reason why we launched the beta tool is so we can use the technology and the, the, the data in the background to be able to present apprenticeship opportunities next to undergraduate courses on UCAS.com. So um, from actually this month, when a student or anybody is on UCAS.com doing a search in the main search bar, if they search the word accounting, they will see their undergraduate courses and they will see all relevant apprenticeship opportunities right next to them. So we take away those barriers where young people don't know that an apprenticeship is an opportunity to reach a, a relevant career. Um, career Finder is free for employers to advertise apprenticeship vacancies. You can also put internships and graduate jobs on there as well. Um, and all of those will appear in, in the journey for students on the website. Um, just some stats really from a Career Finder um, campaign that we ran for an employer. I can't mention the employer, it's not Sky, I've just used one of their job ads here just to show you. Um, but this is stats for um, particularly for an accounting degree apprenticeship programme um, where the, the job received over 2,000 job views and nearly 800 applications and actually the whole campaign received about 30,000 job views and nearly 7,000 clicks to apply and that was over a, a variety of different opportunities. So some really great stats there coming through um, from the Career Finder platform. And then um, we also have uh, digital reach tools as well. So we offer a whole variety of tools to reach the audience, um, which we do for apprenticeship opportunities, but we also do for kind of brand building for industry customers as well. So uh, we have on-site display ads, so adverts on UCAS's homepage or various other key pages um, within the website, for instance, on the industry guide for accounting and finance, that there may be the opportunity for some on-site display. We see over 9 million average monthly page views on our on-site display ads. Um, we can send email campaigns to our potential applicant database and to our applicant database with a over 50% average open rate. Um, we can run paid media social ads, so through our social channels, so we've got 400,000 potential applicants uh, across Facebook and Instagram, 350,000 potential applicants across Snapchat, we can run TikTok campaigns, etc. Uh, we can also do sponsored social and live shows as well, so we do a series of open mic subjects specific open mics in our TV studio um, in our head office which we're always happy to invite experts from um, relevant sectors along to as well. And then we have our discovery exhibitions. So our discovery exhibitions are our face-to-face -face events for students. We run 50 of them up and down the country. We see over 250,000 students uh, across the year at the discovery exhibitions. Three flagship ones in Birmingham, Manchester and London tend to see about 16,000 students through the door and then some of the smaller ones still see eight to 10,000 students over the course of, of the exhibition. Um, we have employer sections for apprenticeships at all of the events so employers are able to kind of pop their brand in front of students as they're, they're thinking about their next steps and these tend to be for year 12 students thinking about their next stage. And then I do have a short video which hopefully if I've got this 
sound shared. This is about our Discovery exhibitions. We've come here today to kind of speak to students, to soak in the vibe and uh, try to get a lot of feedback about what they're interested in right now. Really cool, it's buzzing, lots of students to talk to. It's great to hear what people are thinking about and our company and where we sit and just sort of getting, getting our name out there and showing some of the great things, great opportunities we have. It's important to get the visibility and showcase what it is an, an organisation, an employing organisation does. It's an opportunity to come along and find out about some exciting employment opportunities beyond just the university applications they're making right now. I think the major thing around exhibiting around the UCAS event is really simple. You've got a captive audience here, you know, we had 7,000 people here yesterday uh, and a variety of different students looking at different things. Some of them already know what they want to do, but it's just like putting another option in front of them. You get to have those face-to-face -face conversations. We've had over two years of virtual conversations where we don't get to interact and then there's just that element of human contact that's lost. So get to speak face-to-face -face with students, answer their specific questions, talk to them. I think that's so important. It's been a massive benefit. I mean, just yesterday we spoke to about 120 students. Uh, you know, today we've only been here a few hours, but we've already spoken to like another 20. So we're getting a lot of information. Like, exhibiting at a UCAS event is just a great opportunity for us to engage with a load of young people in one space uh, at one time. Um, so uh, just touch now quickly on what the future looks like at UCAS for apprenticeships. Uh, we've got some really ambitious plans over the, the, the coming couple of years. Hopefully everybody saw the headline in, in February during National Apprenticeship Week um, from the Skills Minister. Um, so um, we're working alongside and in collaboration with the Department for Education to create a single search and application portal for apprenticeship opportunities. So uh, we're delivering parity of search with undergraduate courses this month as a, as a talked about. Um, we've got a new tool launching uh, in the autumn for employers to be able to reach the database more directly and then um, from next year we'll have uh, an application service for apprenticeships as well and that's all being done in collaboration with the Department for Education. So three kind of key things that we're working on in terms of our journey to parity so as I've talked about some of this year apprenticeship opportunities on UCAS.com. Our employer talent finder product is available from the autumn this year already employers can access the database for email and, and paid media campaigns but this will be about accessing the database across a series of data points to really be able to target young people that are absolutely right for um, apprenticeship opportunities and there's a series of, of data points um, that employers will be able to to utilize in terms of location sector area of interest and then also how can you widen the recruitment pool so how can you bring more women in? How can you access people from ethnic minority backgrounds to be able to widen the recruitment pool there? How can you access people um, from more deprived areas of, of the UK to work on social mobility? And then from 2024, the, um, the apprenticeship application service as well. Um, so quite a lot there to take in. I'm here for the remainder of the webinar um, and uh, my colleague Teddy is also here as well so please feel free to pop anything in the chat and if you'd like a call with with one of us just for some more kind of detailed information then um, then please shout. Fabulous thank you so much Lindsay really really exciting I think I wonder whether the A of UCAS needs to stand for apprenticeships now. Well um, it's very interesting because Rob Halfen's asked us to do <laughs> <laughs> to do that quite publicly <laughs> it's not our decision we are a charity so the trustees would have to decide <laughs> fantastic and actually that the, the thing you're talking about the the apprenticeship application service coming in next year by the sounds of it i'm guessing that will be quite a standardized approach um from the candidate's perspective regardless of the employer and i wonder whether that will then impl have implications for how employers might then do their other vacancy advertising because they're not going to want sort of two sets of forms and two sets of data being gathered and whether that will create more consistency to the way that apprenticeships are, are applied for. It's very, very much the hope that, you know, we want young people to be able to utilise the data we hold about them to click a button and use that data to, to make their, their applications. But also we need to work with employers to make sure employers are getting what they need from that service. You know, how can we integrate directly with employer systems that they've already got in situ? So we're, we're in the early stages on that at the moment and always happy to have conversations with employers. If there's any insight that people can, can help us with to make sure that we build exactly what 
what employers need. Fantastic. And I mean, going back to almost one of the original points, do you think this will then have an impact on the way or the parity with which apprenticeships are messaged and communicated at school level by teachers, careers, advisors? I think it definitely will. And, you know, the challenge that we hear from teachers and advisors, because we run an annual conference with teachers and advisors every year, the challenge we hear is they want to support apprenticeships, but A, they don't really know how to effectively, and B, there are, there are insufficient opportunities out there for the number of students that are interested in apprenticeship opportunities. So actually, there's a, there's a big piece of work across the wider sector, which again, you know, we're looking at with DFE and with the Institute for Apprenticeships on how can we help employers to stimulate opportunities opportunities for school and college leavers um, and then how can we help teachers to be really confident in terms of the parity of support they give. Yeah although actually from the perspective I see talking to employers and particularly in the accountancy sector you know they're saying there aren't enough candidates for the number of opportunities they've got so well. perhaps <laughs> We can definitely help with that because there are nearly 40,000 candidates already in the potential applicant database for the 2024 cycle looking at accounting and finance, um, of which over half of them are interested in apprenticeships. And this year there are over 500 unplaced applicants for accounting programmes at university that, that don't have something to go to in September this year. So we can definitely help if you don't have the candidates. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully a great addition to the, the sort of talent pipelines of um, of a lot of the employers that we work with. But thank you, Lindsay. Fantastic you. presentation and look forward to, to crossing paths a lot in the future. Um, well, to finish off, I want to come to Dave Payne of the ICAW is actually going to talk about a couple of other initiatives which employers, I think, should definitely consider as part of widening their engagement with schools, engagement with the young adults, even at quite an early stage, isn't it, Dave? Uh, yeah, thanks, Gareth. Hopefully everyone can see uh, my screen. Um, it looks all good. Thanks uh, for the thumbs up, Gareth. Um, so, yeah, Dave Payne, Head of Access and Volunteer Programmes. I've been working um, in sort of early careers, specifically with schools for over 10 years now, which um, it's quite scary for me, uh, but um, have seen massive changes. And I think that some of those have been outlined already. Before I get into talking specifically about Rise and Access Accountancy, I thought it would be worth just touching on um, engaging with schools and how it differs from universities. I know there's been some great advice given out. Generally, uh, schools are more sceptical and more time poor than university. They, they don't have dedicated resources always um, to access careers and to support careers. There's no real st standard set up like there is at university where you have that dedicated career service, you will have the faculty that you can engage with as well. And it's a lot more fragmented than that. And, and I think they demand more value from employers that are engaging with them. You can you you need to be a little bit uh, sort of think outside the box and not be as transactional as perhaps you might be with university students. Um, so what does that mean you need to be? Be flexible in your approach. Um, definitely uh, it needs to fit around the school. You can't sort of, it, you need to be flexible with your time uh, and the way you're doing things and lots of innovative methods that have already been mentioned today. You need to demonstrate trust. Um, you need to build a longer term relationship with the school in that sense. I think that you do that with universities, but certainly because of that skepticism, you need to generate trust. And because of that, I would, I'd highly recommend going to the experts and bringing in expertise. And that the great thing about the schools market is a lot of the time you have charity, social enterprises um, uh, or all businesses that are committed to doing good as well as, you know, the sort of commercial arm of their business. But uh, bringing in that expertise is key. And that also you'll find different organisations are good at different things. Some will be great at the mass engagement. If you want to get out there to a lot of students, then there are suppliers who presented here today who are great at that. Likewise, if you want to be a bit more targeted in your approach, then there are suppliers that can do that at a regional level with specific demographics um, uh, and who are brilliant at it, and some that do both. Um, my last thing, which leads on to Rise and Access Accounting, I suppose, is be really thoughtful about who you need to reach um, and where you, you know, we can't do it, we can't do everything, um, but have a think about who might already be aware of your career your your business you know accountancy and finance whether that's law and so on and have a think about where you might need to focus to widen that pipeline or to increase your talent pool and i suppose that leads on to 
um, rise in access to council, which is specifically focused on um, encouraging talent from uh, low socioeconomic backgrounds. And, and the reason they focus there probably is, one, we know it's a huge issue for the UK, um, but two, um, we feel like it's a bit of a golden thread of EDI, which sweeps up some other factors with it. Um, there's links between it, uh, either in what you would do or um, the types of people you're reaching. Um, so RISE, um, we set up about, or uh, sort of started talking about it back into 2019, but it's been going in earnest um, since 21-22 uh, academic year. And our vision is to equip the hardest to reach young people with the skills they need to succeed in life and work. Um, <clears throat> what does this look like? Well, um, we deliver workshops to schools around the UK, which are supported by volunteers from one of our 27 current 27 employer partners in partnership with an organization called the Talent Foundry who have this network of schools. And that's the expertise I was sort of talking about at the beginning. Without their network, without the trust they built with schools and their facilitators, we would not be able to deliver the RISE program. We don't just don't have that expertise within the organizations. Um, the workshop's nothing new, right? Um, we focus on year 10 students. Lots of people run workshops. How do ours differ? Well, I think the key thing is from a school perspective, one, we link quite closely to the curriculum. Two, we also then link to the skills builder framework, which people might be familiar with, which identifies eight essential skills common across various industries and proven to improve career chances. And then um, also we have a focus that this year, 50% of the workshops will take place in rural and coastal areas. So we're going to locations that don't otherwise get this employer engagement. Um, so I think that's that's some of the unique stuff uh, about what we're doing. Um, last year, this is the impact we had. So we, had to, we ran 50 workshops last year. We'll run 100 this year. We had excellent ratings across our sessions. Um, uh, some of the best ratings that Talent Foundry have seen. They support other programs, but some of the, the best um, uh, numbers they've seen. And, and it's been hugely positive. We've been able to reach around about 3,000 um, year 10 students. We expect to reach about 6,000 this academic year. And I highlight some of the, the schools. So Walney School is, is in Barrow and Furness, um, just sort of on the edge of the coast of the Lake District. Extremely difficult to get to geographically for the UK, right? It's uh, nearest place is probably Lancaster. It's about two hours away from that, I would suggest, um, by, by car. Uh, but because of that, those students just don't have this type of engagement otherwise, and they don't get to meet multiple employers all at once, um, uh, multiple roles, uh, which is hugely beneficial in, in sort of broadening their horizons and supporting some of their aspirations. So that's a little bit about RISE. Um, the call to action here is we want employers to get involved. Um, we have we we've got sessions in schools right across the country. I was in one in Cleethorpes near Grimsby uh, just last Friday. Um, but we need more coverage across the UK, so we want employers to get involved. I'll post the link to the website where there's a contact us form, um, uh, and uh, people can sort of get in touch with us from there, uh, and I'll send some further information. Uh, the next uh, um, Thing I'd like to talk about talk about is Access Accountancy. So Access Accountancy, as it says there, is a charity that was established in 2014 and involves more than 25 accountancy firms, professional bodies. So all of the professional bodies are involved, apart from SEMA, I think. Um, Lorna, I know who's on the call, is is involved, uh, and and people from AAT, etc., who, who've already talked about things. I suppose if if Rise is looking at supporting young people developing the skills they need, particularly those from low socioeconomic backgrounds. Access Accountancy then supports the employers to be able to reach that talent and support that talent and make sure that recruitment processes are fair and equal, etc. It is specific about the accountancy, but not specific about ICAW. So it's not specific to our qualification. It, all, all qualifications welcome. Um, how do we do that? So if you were to come uh, get involved as, uh, as a, an employer in Access Accountancy, um, we provide things like um, data analysis and benchmarking, so submitting data around your work experience, applications and hires, and um, those who are progressing within your organisation, and then feed that back to you um, so that you can identify what further support might be needed, what changes to application processes might be needed, um, or how your work experience um, uh, scheme is 
is uh, performing. We provide best practice through events not dissimilar to what Gareth, uh, what Gareth has put on today, um, but also um, working groups where we have discussions around what can you do to your recruitment processes? How does contextualised recruitment work? How, uh, how can you support people going through? What online tests show what bias and so, and so on? Um, also around collecting data, make sure you're collecting the right data points, making sure you get good, good, uh, good completion rates. What does mentoring schemes look like? What do employer networks look like around social mobility? Um, also on outreach, so we run a collective campaign each year. The one for this year is just finished and that generates leads, all of whom fit access accountancy criteria. So they'll be from a low socioeconomic background uh, to which you can then um, promote your work experience and apprenticeship opportunities. Uh, and, and again, give advice and guidance around that. And then finally, advocacy. So we, we ask everyone to shout about access accountancy and encourage more to come on board. But we um, widen, widen the engagement and try and speak at stuff that um, uh, like this uh, so that we can have a better collective impact. So for access accountancy, the way it works for an employer is there is a, a, a financial contribution, um, but it's commensurate with your size of organisation. Um, for RISE for next year, all we're asking for is a commitment in terms of volunteer time. Um, and that is me one minute before deadline. Um, all <laughs> I've got the, uh, the, th the links in the chat. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you for finishing off our webinar. So, well, hopefully plenty of food for thought for our audience and for employers. Lots and lots of different approaches, different platforms, different initiatives to allow them to engage with young adults. I think if any message comes over loud and clear, it's that employers really need to take the initiative and be proactive getting out in front of young adults, giving careers advice, talking to the, the schools, the colleges, helping even teachers and careers advisors to make sure they're being relevant. So I'd like to thank my speakers, we had Daryl for the, from the Careers and Enterprise Company. Uh, we had Dan, assisted by Susie from Young Professionals. We had Laura from Speakers for Schools, Christos from Get My First Job, uh, Rebecca from Not Going to Uni. We had Lindsay from UCAS, supported by her colleague Teddy, and finished off with Dave uh, from the ICAW Talk About Rise and Access Accountancy. So thank you very, very much, everybody, for your attention this morning. I hope that has been extremely useful. Uh, do get in touch either with the individuals who've been speaking or feel free to use me as a, an intermediary. But we are bang on 10 o'clock there. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank <laughs> you.